What's going on, guys? I'm here at VisionCon 26, 2017. I'm here today with Mr. Steve Downs, the voice of Halo's Master Chief. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Great. You great. beat me to the question. <laughs> <laughs> That's an easy one. How you doing? <laughs> um, just to kind of get started, uh, what's it like being one of the most iconic voices in all of gaming? Well, it's, uh, I, I suppose, obviously, it's fun. It's exciting. <laughs> Uh, it's it, it, there. There's a, a strange quality to it because right. uh, it's something that I never planned on. Uh, sure, you know, it just it just uh, kind of happened. And uh, but the interesting thing about it is, is that that uh, play, first of all, voicing a character right. instead of being an on-camera person, and secondly, voicing a character who basically you never see, right. has its advantages because <laughs> when you don't want to be Master Chief, it's pretty easy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Turn the voice off, right? Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not like I get recognized on the street or anything. I got you. Uh, but when you do, when, when you are in the character or when you're mm -hmm. at conventions and, and, and talking about Halo and all that stuff, it's, it's a lot of fun and, and has been for the last 14, 15 years. I got you. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. Halo 3's 10-year anniversary is this year? I believe that's 2007. correct. Yes, right. I know. It's I crazy. Time flies. Um, you started as a radio DJ, right? How did how did you go from being you know a radio DJ to getting the job as Master Chief? Well, it was uh, <laughs> strangely it, it was a direct line. I mean, a lot of radio people will get in voiceover. That's not mm -hmm. all that uncommon, and that that was sort of my. Uh, track when I was in Los Angeles uh, on the air, and I, right. I sort of gravitated to voiceover. Uh, the 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 connection between radio and Halo for me, mm -hmm. uh, Bungie was based in Chicago initially, and that's where I was working on the air at the time. And Marty O'Donnell, who was the guy who wrote and performed all the music on the Bungie right. uh, Halo games and cast all the, the voices, beautiful soundtrack, tremendous soundtrack. Um, he used to listen to me on the radio and thought I might be a good match for Master Chief. That's amazing. And just, uh, you know, like the, the, the biggest gig of my life was the gig I never auditioned for. He just called me and said, would you like to come down insane. and do this? And, and uh, I sure. It's a, the perfect case of the right place at the right it time. It was the right place at the right That's time. That's amazing. Indeed. The, the, the jump from, from, being, from working for Bungie in Halo, working for 343, mm. you've said in many other interviews that I've read and watched that it was, it was a stressful time. Uh, going from Halo 3 to Halo 4? It was a little bit, uh, because you're, you're working with a completely, almost a completely different crew. Right. Uh, and who had their own vision of where they wanted to take uh, Halo. Uh, so it, the, there really wasn't a guarantee that I was going to continue in the role. Right. Um, uh, and plus the fact that, that Halo 4 was going to require different things from For the sure. voice of Master Chief than the first three had, had done. Uh, so I, I remember when we first went in and we did some, some test recording, if you will, which quite frankly was really an audition. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, they, they didn't they call it, it test recording. They, they, they called it, they, they said they were testing some new equipment, but what it really, <laughs> I knew what it really was. The Chinese and, sneaky on you. Yeah, well, I think Crazy. that they had uh, some uh, concern about would I be able to take the chief uh, mm -hmm. emotionally where he was going to go in Halo right. 4. What they didn't know is that, that that's what I wanted to do all along. I see. And I was dying to expand that that role a little bit. That's cool. So when I saw, you know, when we they brought some scripts in and we you know, did some reading, test recording, uh, <laughs> they... Uh, uh, I, I was I I, I I lapped it up with a spoon. I mean, it was just this is exactly what I wanted to That's do. Awesome. What I wanted to do as an actor with Halo. So uh, fortunately, they liked it. I liked it, and you know, we we went on from there. That's really cool. Uh, this is, um, did the added stress make you play Chief any differently, or I wouldn't say the stress made me play. You know, you just said it was it was what you wanted to do to begin it, with. It's what I wanted to do. I think I just went for it. That's awesome. You know, I think what uh, when when I knew what was going on, I, I was like, "There's no holding back here. Let's just go for it. They're either going to like it or they're not going to like it." That's fair. And uh, and so I, you know, I really and, and I think that helped me, you know, to bring him 
uh, emotionally to a higher level is just like, let's just go for it awesome. and, and, and see what happens. And, uh, and, and quite honestly, once we got past that little moment and we started to actually do some work on it, mm -hmm. uh, there were great writers involved, I had some great direction, and we really began to work as a team to take this story where they wanted it to go. That's really cool. This is the question I know I'm getting the NDA answer for. Okay. Uh, Halo 5 kind of ended on a cliffhanger. A little bit. Yes, it did. Um, is Cortana kind of doing, you know, her own thing and wanting to do what she wanted to do. And yeah, he, she's got her own ideas about, and about where John and, and Locke trying to stop her now. Yeah. Is Halo 6 coming? Well, look, the, uh, the, this, the truth of it is, mm -hmm. uh, is, is that I don't know. <laughs> uh, and, that, and that is the truth. I, I, I don't think there's any question that there will be a Halo 6. I, I don't think that's going to come as a shock to anybody. Um, where the story is going to go, I really have no idea. It's obviously going to be, you know, bit, like you said, five ended on a cliffhanger, and there's some issues that need to be resolved. Right. And, um, and to the extent that they will be resolved and how they will be resolved, I really have no idea. Uh, I haven't seen anything yet, so I, I mean, even if I wanted to tell you, I which you. I don't, <laughs> I couldn't because I, I just don't know yet. But I can tell you, all, all I can tell you is I'm really excited about the possibilities of, of, of where this story can go. You're, you're almost certain at this point in time that if there is a Halo 6, you will be the, the voice? Well, again, there are no guarantees in life. <laughs> you know, That's fair. But uh, I, I, would, uh, I would certainly hope so, and I have, I have no reason to think that that won't happen. I got you. Okay. Um, just to kind of end the interview on a on a different note, mm -hmm. can you tell me about some of your favorite con experiences over the years? Well, I mean, they're, they're all fun, I mean, right? And they're all interesting. So uh, anything that just sticks out to you? I, I, I was telling uh, somebody here earlier there was a, a con I did in uh, in uh, Arkansas uh, a few years back, GlitchCon. I've done that a couple of times. You know, uh, that GlitchCon? You, you know that one? Yeah. There's a guy you know, who came to meet me, and he was just you know, trembling and shaking and sweating and, you know, and, and just, I mean, he was having a hard time with it. And I, we, I had to, like, you know, sort of pull him aside and say, you know, it's okay. Because cool. I knew he, you know, there was things he wanted to ask or say or right. whatever, and I didn't want him to go away from the things saying, you know, damn, I should have. Yeah. You know. So, with, you know, we, we, I, I was able to... Uh, you know, sort of kind of getting back down to earth, and we did actually have a conversation. But, That's really cool. But the, what happens more often than not um, is that you, uh, I, I can't tell you how many times I've uh, talked to people who tell me that, that you know, Halo was a life changer for them, right. or uh, that, you know, Halo was the one thing in their lives when things weren't going well, and That's they cool. were having a rough time, you know, whatever it might have been, family or some physical thing or whatever. Right. It was being able to sit down there and play Halo that sort of kept them going. And, uh, to you know, stay in the fight. To stay in the fight. Good, <laughs> good choice of words. And uh, that really makes you feel, I mean, you feel like you're really doing, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's just nice to know that, that beyond just the fun of it and the excitement and, the, and mm -hmm. obviously what it's done for my career, that, that you can uh, have a, uh, play some role in having an impact on somebody yeah, in a very positive way. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Thank you. That's, uh, that's all Thank I got you, for Frank. you. My pleasure, buddy. Thank Glad you for your time. I'm uh, really happy to do an interview with one of the most legendary voices at all of gaming. Well, thank yeah. you, Frank. I appreciate that. And uh, um, we're having a good time here at Vision. We Island. are. It's yeah. only Friday. Yeah, it's only, that's right. We're just getting started, buddy. <laughs> just getting started. The fun starts tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, until next time, guys, I'm Frank Black.